Hello and welcome. We are handling green power weapons in this one. Not only this, but you know, the last time we did power blades, uh, they were a more simple color. They just involved three different colors, a white, a mid blue, and a dark blue. It was a straight blade as well. So we've gone for a curved one. We're gonna talk about that, talk about masking, and then we're gonna really step it up and go for a much more complex one. Also, I made not a huge mistake in this one, but I made a mistake that I thought was worthy of covering and fixing. So about halfway through the video, you'll see me fixing what was practically a finished weapon at that point, talking about it, and then we'll apply what I learned from that to the next one. Hit us up with suggestions for future content down below in the comments. Much appreciated. This one has been requested quite a lot, so let's jump in and let's get some Necron power weapons sorted. So we are on power weapons again, but this time we're not covering a, you know, a helpfully shaped sword as we did in the previous one, what we're gonna do here is work our way around something a bit more tricky. So we have a glaive here, it's got a curved head, but basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna get around this a little bit planning. So I'll use some water on my brush here to demonstrate. You could mask down the straight edge, but masking the curve may be a bit tricky. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna paint all of this outside edge, trying to stay within, but you know, it doesn't matter too much if not. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a mask down the straight line and have some contrasting sections here, so some light sections here. But the helpful thing is that we're gonna have this one go to very dark here. And that means that we can paint it with a bit of a glaze and just block it out and that should really help, you know, kind of give that transition between the two sections of the blade. That's what we're going for and it should really make a difference to how achievable this is and how crisp it looks. Dampening pad out, very important for this one. You know, we are trying to do fine high quality work. Now what we've got here is some Xeris purple mixed with some warpstone glow, which was our base coat. You could change to whatever works for you though. I've only got a tiny bit in here. This is just to kind of start blocking in the required section. So we've said we want the blade to be really dark here on this end. So we want it to be really light there. So I go really dark in the middle. And I am gonna leave here for us to fade into this. Um, I'm gonna try and work my way up to the line or past the line, but never just before the line. I'm gonna work away the majority of the previous steps worth of paint, grab some of that purple, and make a much darker mix. We're gonna to have to be extremely careful with this, so you'll see a lot of it coming off my brush. I mean a lot. If you use the dampening pad, we are at, you know, like powdering uh, consistency here. And what we're gonna do is just gently build it up with patience. Now I'm aiming for the middle part of this section and even if it looks like nothing is coming off the brush, I'm still gonna stick to that section because something will be coming off and I want this result to be pretty subtle. So at this point, we've got Baby D coming out, pure purple. I didn't use Dangroff Knight here because it's a base paint and it's a little bit physically thick, but that color would have been something that I think maybe would have been perfect. Xeris purple is all right then. We can glaze like a purple black into this section or something like that, if required. Perfect. So the next step is to mix a little bit of moot green in with our warp stone. Now we do really want this to be subtle and there is absolutely no rush. So, you know, you can build it up however slowly you like. It's still gonna be pretty quick. Take a little bit more of the moot. If at any point you do go too heavy, you can very frequently just stipple it out. So I think at this point, we can go pretty much pure. Really, I'm gonna work it in a lot. It's time to get out the heavy hitters. So on my palette here, it's a somewhat similar green to Moot Green. I've got bright yellow green from Monument. Okay, so starting from pure Moot Green, I've not removed nearly as much there in an attempt to improve coverage. So what I've done is I've picked one spot on the blade and I am just gonna stipple it out and bring a lighter glow to that section. Make sure to transition it at the edges. This is an organic technique. I always try and kind of push this as an idea. So you can jump back and if at any point you're not happy with your transitions, your blends, as long as you're going at the right section, you can go backwards and forwards as much as you want. So I've decided here that my transition from the purple to the warp stone glow isn't quite up to scratch. So I'm just gonna hop in and smooth it out a bit. Okay, 
I wanted that purple section to be narrower. There we go. Now I may regret this because this is a extremely um, solidly covering white. I can remove quite a lot of it off my brush. Back to the dampening pad. Then go in and really, really soften it out. You can see I've got yellow here on my hand and then the yellow mixed, or the yellow green rather, mixed with that white instantly. It's kind of, it's almost hitting luminous territory. So let's proceed carefully. Yeah, maybe it was a little bit strong. It's quite a, um, a potentially grainy white in terms of how it looks in other colors because it is so strong. So really I'm gonna take care here. So just adding a higher proportion of white and stipping a narrower and narrower section of the blade. We're looking to follow the opposite of this line here. So that's how it would have been if we'd masked it off, but you know, I don't feel there was any particular need to do that. So we'll do the opposite of this, just as if we are doing it masking both ways. I'm gonna mask off this section of the blade here. Now it's important to do it, if, if you're doing it anywhere, do it smaller than the area that you need because we're gonna be able to block out the rest of it. Okay, and then it's basically everything we've done already, we're gonna do again. So the lighter section is gonna be the middle next to where it's dark, and then the dark section is gonna be here next to where it's light. And we'll just uh, rock on in exactly the same way that we did before, but you know, with no worry of it getting anywhere that we're worried about. Okay, now in one of the early steps here, I did go a little bit heavier than I should have, and that's resulted in a bit of caking, which is a bit unfortunate, but hopefully when we take that tape off, we'll uh, kind of show exactly what we're going for. So you can see we've got that fairly nice crisp line there. You could almost just, you know, keep it like that. But what I'm gonna do is push these a little bit with a tiny bit of glazing, and then we'll end up with what is hopefully a super smooth power blade. I took these more to white, so I need to balance that out by taking this closer to white as well. But aside from that, I'm fairly happy with the tones. I do need to drag some purple into the bottom and top of this uh, section of the blade on the left, but uh, that was part of the plan anyway. So let's address that little discrepancy we've got there where we didn't quite go to white. Not too white, too close to white. A little bit bold there, I've gone heavy handed. So what I'll do is I'll fuzz it out. I'll do a little bit of balancing and correcting. I'm gonna jump to an M1 for this. It holds quite a lot of paint in its body and it's still got a nice tip, but it's short and it's got a little bit less flex. So that should really help with control. Straight in with a purple, just diluting with water. So getting on the purple, then wash out the brush. And we're going into that again with water to soften it. And I'll just repeat this several times and that should really help push the purple in these deep contrasts. Just when I was looking at the blade for potential glazing, I realized that I want to take this little end section here just a tiny bit darker. So what I'm gonna do is I will grab a little bit of the purple, very dilute. Now I don't wanna go all the way with it, but I just wanna take it a little a little bit into the darker spectrum. That will just help push this kind of, this fading and these transitions and these contrasts that we've got here to a nice degree. You can make anything look brighter by just putting something darker next to it. Always remember that. I am gonna edge highlight this. I'm using the S00. For the first stage at least, I'm just gonna use the bright yellow green from Monument. Now, a couple of ways you can go about this. If it is on the, it is an actual edge edge. And you can simply use the side of your brush.
Okay, now with the line down, what I can do is just build it up carefully, really, really modulating the distance that I am away from the blade, trying to keep it exactly the same and very fine. There we go. So what I'm going to do is go over this, neaten it a little bit without the camera in front of my face, and then we can highlight that if we wish. So what we're going to be doing now is highlighting our edge highlights. All of this is optional. And I'm going to be using a little bit of a special technique here. So I'm just going to mix up some of our white with some of our green to make a very, very strong minty limey green. And what we're going to do here is have a tiny amount of paint on the end of our brush. Work it in a bit, that'll help dilute it. And I'm just going to keep this for the lighter sections of the blade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the section where it's mostly water and then my stroke's going to come down to where it's mostly paint. Start where it's mostly water, come down to where it's mostly paint. And what we should get here is a highlight that gets brighter just in one section. So I will do this all over the blade. So we are done, or are we? This has been a failure, not a huge failure, but I'm going to explain why. Hopefully uh, this makes sense to you guys. So what we're going to do is going to pop up a picture of this blade turned, uh, well, a blade as it is now, ding. And then we're going to also pop up a picture of the blade turned black and white, ding. So it's a bit like a weird spot the difference. What I think the bit of this blade that is a failure is, is this side edge here. Now, the reason for that is there is not enough contrast from light to dark between this purple and the green that I've chosen. And as a result of that, when it's turned black and white, one side of the blade is just completely mid-tone gray. If we put it together with this recent one, you know, that one is just popping more. Now that is an easier blade to work on, et cetera, et cetera, blah, blah. But at the same time, you know, I would regard the blue one as more successful for this reason. I want this to be super striking in all respects. So what we're going to do, I've got a neck one here and I'm going to quickly see what I can do for him. I am also going to see what I can do to fix the other one because, you know, mistakes are part of the hobby. It's very, very rare that you have a full 100% mistake, which needs wiping, starting again and fixing. And I think that I should be able to do a little bit of work with glazing to see what I can do for this. I've grabbed a scale 75 purple because a lot of their deep colors and nuts. That's what we used on the other blade. And we're gonna try and fix it. So uh, yeah, I will probably time-lapse in the Necron blade and the fixing of the other blade. But essentially, I should have just used a darker purple. I actually mentioned, if it makes the cut, Nagaroff Knight at the beginning of this video and said that I didn't use it because it's a base. I should have just gone with my gut and used that paint. And I think things would have been fine. Anyway, let's fix it. That was a nice learning point. Off we pop. <laughs> I thought I would take it off time-lapse because I'm actually learning something here. Um, I am working to a deadline, so I'm having to go really, really fast. Um, this blade is bigger. Bigger blades are just easier. You know, it's, look at the difference there. It doesn't look very big when I'm doing it like that, but you know, when you put it next to a tiny glaive, this is so much more forgiving to work on and um, to be honest, enjoyable as well. So basically what I'm doing here is I am using my dampening pad a little bit more heavily than normal. And the reason for that is to kind of promote a bit more transparency in my painting. So I'm kind of doing glazy stippling here. The stippling is a bit wet. There's very little on the brush, but I am making sure that it is pretty dilute. And then I'm just blocking in the areas that I think should be lighter. I've not masked yet. I'll probably mask in the next step, but essentially, with that extra dilution from the dampening pad, it's just letting me, you know, do stuff at a pretty smooth looking level without it being too much hard work. And this should end up looking amazing, actually. I think it's going to look really, really good. And it's been fast, really fast, like so much faster than the last one. So what I'm going to do here is I've got to a pretty light stage now. I'm just going to rock on and jump in with the Baby D and start exaggerating these areas just by adding um, a higher proportion of the yellow green and then a higher proportion of white to that. So 
So this has worked out pretty well. Just taking the masking tape off. Nice. So now all that remains is for me to carefully use this purple and block out these sections. Now this is always a little bit worrying. Hopefully it goes right first time. So everything has been edged with a little bit of the original green. So our warp stone glow mixed in with the yellow green from Monument. That's because some of these areas do go pretty dark with the purples and stuff. So I just, you know, I thought particularly around this section here, which is the odd bit of the blade for me, um, I thought that would be a bit strange. So now I've done that one, I can mix a bit of white in with the limey green and then we can go all over the sections that aren't those ones that I'm worried about once I've uh, once I've popped something down the blade here. Okay so we are done and both of these have been brought pretty much in line with each other. I think they're quite successful. Uh, I took a fair bit of time on the edging of this one. Um, basically if stuff was uh, I did it all with one layer and then the highlight layer went either next to bright points or bits that were topwards facing. So you'll notice that I've not, I've done a light one here because it faced upwards, and then I've not highlighted this bit here a second time. This bit has been hit because it's facing upwards even though it's on the dark, etc. And then this bit's been highlighted even though it's facing downwards because it's next to a light section. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, yeah, I just wanted to have kind of a, a rule to follow for it. I think that's way, way, way better. So much more pleased with that than I was with the previous one. This little circle, God knows what to do with that circle. Let me know what you do with that circle. Bit of a nightmare really, um, but far more in line with this and I'm just generally more pleased with that in general. Definitely learned a lot here. Um, thank, uh, thankfully the ability to turn things black and white is doable by anyone on a smartphone so I'd really recommend that. You know, if you're not quite understanding something, take a picture of it, turn it black and white and then you might learn something just like I did. All right, so we are done. Simple one turned out pretty nicely in the end. <laughs> and then the complex one, which was far more complex. Let's face it, it's got more size, more volume. It's got little sections on it. It's bigger though, which was helpful. Um, that turned out pretty nicely as well. Dramatically more difficult, as I said in the intro, than the blue power weapon was, but probably more fulfilling, even if it was more of a struggle. Maybe that says something about life, I guess. Anyway, I've really had fun doing that one. Hopefully you guys have found this useful. Remember all of the all aspects of this, including the fixing mistakes, but it's not just related to paint and green power weapons. It can be related to any part of the hobby and any colors. So, you know, you could apply this to a bright pink blade that comes from a purple base, anything like that. You know, what we said about midtones is still really relevant. And, um, you know, just contrast in general, especially if you're making gaming minis, but in all respects, you know, things that grab attention generally work out pretty well in the hobby. And from three feet away across the table, when you're this close to a model, and you can criticize it really perfectly. The rules for what are applicable there are completely different to when it's at arm's length. So I would always encourage people to look at their miniatures at arm's length and consider them for where you intend using them. So if you are gonna put them on a gaming table, they're on a cabinet that's you know four meters away, then maybe do ramp up the contrast a little bit and don't worry too much about the blends you know, from two inches away being absolutely perfect. Um, it's all about you know getting your own enjoyment out of the hobby on your terms, which is something I believe pretty strongly in. Anyway, thank you very much for tuning in. Pop all suggestions for future content down below in the comments. We'll catch you in the next video.